Tell them I really love the Lord. Come on, will you tell somebody else, I really love the Lord. I love the Lord. Love it's a personal Lord. declaration. I said it's a personal declaration. And nobody can determine for you how much you love him. You got to look over your life and see where God brought you from. See the stuff that God delivered you out of. And you got to give God glory because before you loved him, he loved you. I can't get a witness in the building. He knew everything about us and he still loved us. He knew when we were going to do right and when we were going to do wrong. And he still made a way out of nowhere. I just need you to lift up your voice one more time and give God this from your heart. Hallelujah. Hey. Yeah. Say, I love you, Jesus. Come on, say, I worship and adore. Just want to tell you. than anything we came today to let you know that we prioritize you that we put you above every problem every situation every other loved one in our life God you come first and we want you to know how much we love you we want you to know how much we appreciate you we want you to know that we realize if it had not been for you on our side we would not be here today so God we give you what we owe you this morning we give you what we owe you this Sunday thank you for 30 more days thank you for covering us with your hand with your power with your blood thank you because you keep on being better than we could be to ourselves and so God we pray that you would receive our worship today Receive our praise today. Receive our hallelujah today. Receive our thank you, Jesus, today. We'll be careful to give you all the glory and all the honor. Somebody ought to shout, Lord, I love you. Lord, I love you. More than anything, yeah. Come on, put your hands together and give God praise in the house. Hallelujah. While you are standing to your feet, amen, I believe in thanking God and reverencing leadership, amen, and I thank God for my bishop who has allowed me, amen, to come and to share on this Sunday morning, amen, but I want to thank God for your leader today, amen, for amen. all of these great leaders. Will you give God praise for Reverend David Allen? Come on, thank God for him. Amen. Thank God for all of these elders, all of these officials. Come on, thank God for them. Amen. Yes. Thank God for Lady Allen in the house. Come on, thank yes. God for her. Yes. Yes. Amen. Then I want you to turn to your neighbor. Tell them, I'm glad you made it to church today. Yeah, I'm glad you made it because it lets me know that I'm not the only survivor in the building. I'm not the only overcomer. I'm not the only one that the devil tried to kill. But God kept covering and making a way. I'm glad I'm sitting next to somebody else that got victory just like I got it. Hallelujah. Hey, hey. Amen. I don't want to come to church and be the only victorious one. I said I'm not one of those selfish Christians. I don't want to come and be the only one with the victory. 
but I want to sit next to somebody that's got the power of God working in their life. Amen. That's why I come here because I sit on the train every day next to people that ain't got no power. I sit on the bus every day next to people that ain't got no power. But when I come to church, I come to be among the saints. I come to be among the people that got victory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. So please clap your hands when you sit next to me. Please stomp your feet when you sit next to me. Please holla hallelujah when you sit next to me. Because it lets me know that I'm in good company. Amen. Give God one more praise. Amen. I promise. Amen. I won't be before you long this morning. Amen. But we thank God for what has already gone forth in this place. Amen. Amen. And we believe God again. I thank God for my bishop. Amen. Who speaks very highly. Amen. Of your pastor. Amen. And I'm, I got a good leader. Amen. Amen. And so I know that if he speaks highly of anyone, he knows what he's talking about. He is a leader of leaders. Amen. And so I thank God for him. Amen. And for uh, being in a place that I've never been before. Amen. I told pastor that I've passed by here hundreds of times. Amen. But I have not been in. And so I'm grateful this morning for the opportunity to share with you. Amen. Amen. Genesis chapter number 13. Amen. I will not be long. Genesis chapter number 13. Amen. I'm so grateful for a new year. Now the, the months are going by a little fast. Amen. And I got some things I need to do. Look at somebody tell them I got some stuff I got to do. And so I don't want time to catch up on me. Amen. So I've got to be busy about my father's business. Amen. And as the body of Christ, we got to wake up every day with an agenda to be busy about our father's business. Amen. Amen. Because the time is swiftly fleet. And ain't look at somebody tell them ain't nothing you can do about time. You can do a lot about a whole lot of things, but time you cannot stop. Amen. It's going to keep going anyway. And so we've got to use our time wisely in this season. Even to some of my young people, you've got to use your time wisely. Amen. And, uh, and know that your time is valuable. Look at somebody telling my time is valuable. And that's why I don't have time to spend time with people that ain't doing nothing, that ain't going nowhere, that ain't talk, talking about the same thing they was talking about last year. I don't have time, amen, to do that because I've got business to take care of. Hallelujah. And so that is my mind frame in this season, amen. Genesis chapter number 13 beginning, I believe I'll just read 14 and 15. Amen. And the Lord said unto Abram, after that lot was separated from him, lift up now thine eyes and look from the place where thou art, northward and southward and eastward and westward. For all the land which thou seest, to thee I will give it, and to thy seed forever. Uh -huh. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He told him, after he was separated from Lot, lift up thine eyes uh -huh. and look all around you. Uh -huh. Hallelujah. A 360 view. Yeah. And whatever you see. I'm going to give it to you and to your seed. Look at somebody tell them forever. forever, forever, forever. Just want to take for a subject this morning. You can get it from here. You can get it from here. Amen. You can get it from here. This is the beginning of a new year. And although the months are fleeting away from us quickly, many people started out this year with the, the W's of life, the what, the who, the, the, the when, the where, and the why. 
And the truth about it is a whole lot of us know what and who and when and where and why. But the question that plagues many of us is how? How? Uh, we, we all have a desire to do something, especially at the beginning of the year, our senses are heightened as to what it is we want to accomplish. And we want to lose weight, and we want to reach a certain financial status, and we want another job, or we want to start a business. But the truth of the matter is, the what is not the problem. It is the how. And some of us have been plagued with the question of how many people will choose to Google and many people will choose to go to the internet for the how and many people will choose to go to seminars hallelujah and different events to find out how they can get something done but the truth is the saints of God come to the house of God to find out how the saints of God come Come to their heavenly father, the one that created us, the one that predestined us before the foundation of the world. And the Bible tells us to seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and that all these other things shall be added unto us. And so what that says to me is that the how, hallelujah, is not only on the internet and the how is not at the seminar but the how is in me seeking after the things of God the how shows up in my seeking it shows up in my pursuit after God because when I go after him everything that is predestined for my life has got to begin to take place how uh -huh. many people struggle hallelujah with the how and the truth is what we see in front of us and what we vision in front of us will uh, sometime be contrary to what it is that God has already spoken over our lives and because we have not seen it come to pass yet we will be deceived by what is in front of us but I came to encourage somebody today that no matter what you see in front of you even if it's a contradiction to what God already spoke over your life look at your neighbor tell him you can get it from here uh, this is 2020 and many people use 2020 and say that it is an indication of perfect vision but when you look up what 2020 means it does not mean perfect vision it means normal vision I can't get a witness in the building it's not perfect but it's normal uh -huh. and so when you continue to look at what it really means uh, uh, vision or 2020 vision is about what you can see from a particular distance. Uh huh. It's what you can see, hallelujah, from 20 feet away and some people are nearsighted where they've got to have something directly in front of them in order to see it and then there are some people that are normal that can see 2020 and then there are others that are far sighted I can't get a witness in the building but look at somebody and tell them in God no matter where you stand what you see God can give it to you what you see God can put it in your hand and I don't care how far away your blessing may seem I don't care how far away your miracle may seem you can get it from here many people believe that you got to have it in your hand in order to proclaim it you got to have it in your hand in order to say that it's mine Hallelujah. Hallelujah, and we can't believe God when it is not in our proximity. But my Bible tells me that I walk by faith and not by sight. 
right. Look at your neighbor and tell him, neighbor, I don't walk by what I see. I, I don't walk by what I can touch. I don't even walk by what man says I can have. Because if God made me a promise, it's got to come to pass. I just need about 10 people that know God made you a promise. That he promised you your children would be blessed. That he promised you your body would be healed. Look at your neighbor and tell him, I don't care what you see. You can get it from here. My faith, I'm almost done, is the bridge between me and my miracle. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. And so my faith is what connects me to the supernatural. My faith is what links me, hallelujah, from what God said to what is manifested in the earth realm. I've got to learn how to believe God, hallelujah, even when I don't see God, I've got to learn how to stand on his word. When we look at this text, Abram was a man of faith. And the Bible said, Paul says that it was by faith, hallelujah, that his faith was so consistent that it was accounted unto him as righteousness. And so even in Genesis chapter number 12, the Bible said that he that God tells Abram I need you to leave your family I need you to leave your land I need you to leave your father's house I need you to leave everything you're comfortable with behind and I need you to go because I'm going to show you a land look at somebody and tell them neighbor can you move like that can you move out of your comfort zone this year? If God tell you to move, can you shift? Do you have the flexibility to move when God speaks to you? I know you're comfortable where you are because you know how it works over there. I know you're comfortable where you are because everybody does what you tell them to do. But look at somebody and tell them God is shifting us. And we got to be flexible enough to move in God's plan. He said, Abram, I need you to move out of your land and go to a land that I will show you. He didn't say go where I already showed you. He didn't say go where I already uh, set up for you. He said, as you go, I'm going to show. Will you look at your neighbor and tell them, neighbor, this is the year that you got to go first. I can't get a witness in the building. I know somebody hear me tell your neighbor you got to go first. And when you go, you're going to see God showing. You're going to see him show up and show out. The problem some of us have is that we go off of our own vision. Uh -huh. Everybody's talking about vision. But you got to make sure you're doing what God showed you. And not what you showed you. You got to be doing what God showed you. And not what you saw somebody else do. I can't get a witness in the building. You got to do what God showed you. And so Abram takes his family and he moves into another land. And here we are in chapter number 13. And the Bible said that they get to Bethel. Uh -huh. Abraham and Lot, who is his nephew. And when they get to Bethel, they are both very wealthy men. They own quite a bit. But when they get to Bethel the Bible said hallelujah that when they get there that the herdsmen begin to fight each other that Abraham's boys and Lot's boys start getting into a turf war I can't get a witness in the building they, they start getting into a territorial dispute because there was not enough land for all of them to live peaceably and the Bible said that Abraham, he goes to Lot and he says, I don't want there to be any strife between us. 
He says, I don't want there to be a problem between us. He said, here is what I'm going to do. I'm going to make you a deal. And the deal is, wherever you want to go, I'll let you choose for yourself where it is that you want to go. He said, if you go left, then I'll go right. And if you go right, then I'll go left. But I'm doing it because I don't want any strife with you oh I might as well stop right here and say there are some people in your life right now that the strife ain't worth it look at somebody and tell them neighbor the strife is not worth it it's not worth the arguing it's not worth the fussing it's not worth all of the drama look at somebody and tell them neighbor I don't want no drama with them uh -huh, I still love them but I don't want no drama with them I, I still care for them but I don't want no drama with them and so before I go all out on you I'm going to make a deal with you and if you go that way I'm going to love you but I'm going to go that way and if you go this way I'm going to love you but I'm going to go that way because it's just not worth it Look at somebody tell them it ain't worth it because it takes too much energy out of me to argue with you. It's not worth it because it takes too much out of me. I, I'm drained when I get finished talking to you and I can't be in a season where I'm drained because I need all the energy I've got to do what i got to do. So the Bible said that Abram go that 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 lot looks around and as he looks around show me be flat as he looks around lot says hallelujah he says I'm going where where I see that the land is fruitful he looked at where what he saw and the land was fruitful and hallelujah when he saw what was fruitful he said that's what I want over there and Abraham said you know what you can have it hallelujah hallelujah it, 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 it was strange because Lot was the younger one and he should have been the one to defer to Abram he should have been the one to say no uh -uh, you decide man of God and wherever you go I'll go the other way but the Bible specifically says that Lot chose for himself. I can't get a witness in the building. Look at somebody and tell them, neighbor, this ain't the time to choose for yourself. This is not the time for you to choose for yourself. You got to seek ye first. I said you got to look to God. You got to go before God. And you got to say, Lord, where do you want me to go? What do you want me to do? Because I don't just want to go because it looks good. I can't get a witness in the building. I said, I don't want a man because he looks good. I, I, I don't want a house just because it looks good. Because sometimes you can buy a house that looks good. But there's all kind of electrical issue. And there's all kind of plumbing issues. I'm just talking about a house. I'm, I'm not talking about nothing else. But look at somebody and tell them, neighbor, you can't go off what you see. Because sometimes there are things that cannot see that are worse than what you see and so you gotta lean on God you gotta lean not to your own understanding but in all your ways acknowledge him and he will he'll direct your path the Bible said that Abram went his way and Lot went his way and the Bible said he said once Lot separated from Abraham once Lot went his own way once Abraham was in a place by himself the Bible said that that's when God spoke to him and I came to tell somebody you might have to go without people you love you might have to go without people you care for you might have to go 
people without people you thought would be in your life forever but once they leave that's when God is going to show up and if God be for me who can be against me if God walks with me if God talks with me hey somebody say yeah 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 if Jesus goes with me I'll go anywhere as long as he's right there the Bible says that lot went his way and when they separated that's when God started to speak and the truth of the matter is if you want to know how you gonna do everything that you got to do you gotta get somewhere where God can speak to you that's why I come to church on Sunday morning I don't come with my arms crossed I don't come with my legs folded because I need God to tell me how how I'm gonna get my kids through college how I'm gonna pay my mortgage how how am I going to the next level I gotta get in a place where I can hear the voice of God because the truth of the matter is sometimes you can't even hear him at the house it's noisy the TV is on the kids are running the dog is barking and you can't hear God but when I get into the presence of the Lord I use it as an opportunity to hear God's voice speak Lord speak to me tell me which way to go shout it out I'm getting ready to go back to Bethany Avenue but tell your neighbor you better get where you can hear God you better get where you can hear God and then you better open up your ears God said he said Abram now that lot is gone he said I need you he said I need you to lift up your eyes he didn't just say lift them up but he said lift them up now oh God I thank you because there is a timing in God you can't go on your own timing but you gotta wait I say on the Lord you gotta stand still and see the salvation he said lift up now thine eyes and he said whatever you see northward I'm bad with geography I don't know which way is north I don't know which way is south I don't know which way is east I don't know which way is west but all I know is God said whatever 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 I see it's mine will you tap your neighbor and say neighbor whatever you see look around you take a look look through the doors look through the window look through the wall look through the floor look through the ceiling you can get it from here shout yeah Tell your neighbor, whatever you see, you can get it because God, he promised a cattle on a thousand hills. He promised he would not withhold any good thing from those that walk upright. Tell your neighbor, I don't care where you are, you can get it from here. Say, and don't 
y'all sit down. The Bible said that they are in a land that's foreign. And some people got a problem with where they are right now. But look at your neighbor and tell them, neighbor, neighbor. where you are is just as valuable as where you're going. I can't get a witness in the building. Some people complain about where they are, but I came to tell you that where you are is just as important as where you're going because what you do here determines what you do there. What you do here determines what you get there. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, you can get it right where you are. You can have it. You can decree it. You can call it. You can possess it right where you are. I'm going back to Bedford Avenue. But in the beginning of February, I came to let the devil know that everything God promised me, I already got it. I came to let him know that I'm not going to let where I am make me doubt where I'm going. Yes. I, I'm, I'm not going to let where I am stop me from believing God from what he promised yes. I would have. Yes. Let, let me say, my grandmother was alive and I'm getting ready to praise him. When my grandmother was alive, she lived in my house upstairs and she started getting older and older. It was hard for her to get things and reach things and, you know, so she don't, you know, we, she would call us up there to help her. And, you know, we would, yes. What she said, I'm going to fix y'all. She said, I'm going to fix y'all. Because every time I ask y'all to do something for me, somebody got an attitude. Y'all know those people that you need. And they, they, don't, they, they could help you, but they won't. Look at somebody tell them, I'm going to still get it. I'm going to still get it. If you don't help me, I'm going to still get I'm going to figure out a way. I can't get a witness in the building. Look, look at somebody and tell them, you may not want to help me, but I'm going to figure out a way. And when I get it, you're going to wonder. How I did it. How I did it. So, so she said, I need you to take me to Home Depot. She said, I saw something, a commercial on TV, and I need you to take me to Home Depot. And we get to Home Depot. And she walking around, look, I said, Grandma, what is it that you're looking for? She said, I can't explain. I, I don't know the name of it. I can only explain it. She said, it's one of these things that, got a, that has an arm on it. And at the end, at the it's end of it, it's a hand. there's a claw. And at this end of it there, there's a little trigger. I can't get a witness in the building. Yes. And by the time she got finished telling the man what it was she was looking for, he said, oh, ma'am, I know exactly. I still don't know what the name of it is. But when we got back home, I said, you need anything else? She said, no, I don't need you no more. <laughs> and she took that thing and she stretched it out and she pulled that trigger right up in that cabinet and got exactly what she needed. Look at somebody tell them from right where she was. I, I can't get a witness in the building. I dare you to take your faith. I said, I dare you to take your faith and extend it and pull the trigger and watch God make a way out of nowhere from right where you are. You can reach it. You can grab it. You can have it. Somebody ought to praise him. I said somebody that planned to use their faith 
in the next 11 months, will you open up your mouth and praise him? We getting ready to give God praise because the enemy thought you were going to sit around and wait on people that, that, that ain't going to help anyway. The enemy thought you were going to stay stuck with people that God meant for you to separate from so he could talk to you, so he could take you where you need to go. You, you, the enemy thought you were going to stay stagnant where you were because you didn't see how you were going to get to where God wants you to be. But look at somebody, tell them, I'm getting ready to put my faith in action. I said, I'm getting ready to put my faith in action. I'm getting ready to speak those things that be not as though they were. Can I just get about 20 of y'all to give God the praise right where you are? somebody to praise him right where you are I said right where you are right where you I'm going to get the money right from where I am. I'm going to get the house from right where I am. I'm going to get my business up and going from right where I am. My children are going to college from right where I am. back to Brooklyn Bedford Avenue but look at somebody and tell them neighbor you can get it from right where you are I, I know the enemy told you you don't have enough I said I know the enemy told you you don't have enough resources you don't have enough connections you don't have enough money but you ought to let the enemy know because God promised that wherever I look, whatever I see, from whatever distance I am, I can have it. Listen, I've been, I've been praying, and I don't know why I'm telling my business, but I've been praying because my son needs to go back to college, and you know, he got on my nerves, because this first year he didn't do what he was supposed to do, and, and they sent him home, and it hurt my heart because I did everything I could to help him. But he's been home all this since the last semester. And he's been, he had to get a job, because I said, you can't sit in here all day. Right. Got to work. Right. He done had three or four jobs right. and still got one. And I hadn't been able, stay right there, because I'm a shout. If nobody don't shout with me, I can shout by myself. I have been, trying because I have to pay off the old bill in order to get him back. If they told me to even get him in another school, I had to pay off the old bill because he needs a transcript. And so I've been struggling to try to pay off the old bill so he can start school again. And I made him call, this is the deadline, I made him call the other day. I said, I need you to call and just ask what I tell you to ask. Don't add. Don't put no sauce on it. Don't take nothing away. 
because because they won't they won't let me do it I can't some mothers know what I'm talking about they won't let me do it because he's supposed to be grown and that's what he's supposed to be and so I said you say exactly what I tell you to say and so I said I need you to call them and ask them why do you need the transcript from the other school because that's what I want to know because that's what's holding us up why do you need it we ain't asked him that all year I could have asked him that six months ago but the Holy Ghost told me ask them why do they need it is it for you is it for them what is it for when he called and asked he called me back about 30 seconds later crying hysterically on the phone he said mommy I don't need it I, I can't get a witness in the building he said mommy I don't need it he said all I need it's my high school transcript. Oh, yeah. So we went and got the high school transcript and the diploma, went down and registered for school. I, I just need to tell somebody from right where you are, because I still owe the bill, but I believe that by the time it's time to get there, God is going to... Y'all don't want to praise him on a Sunday morning, but I'll praise him by myself. Hey! Right where you are. Right where you are. We going. We going. Right where you are, whatever you in need of, whatever you lack, whatever you don't have, right where you are, God is sovereign and still in control and he can bless you right where you are. Your situation may not change, but God can. Your situation may not adjust, but God can. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And so we move in faith we operate in faith we believe God and we watch God do what no other power can do stand to your feet all over the house Amen. Amen. right where you are God can bless you your family your children your body your household your ministry, your business, God can bless you right where you are. As a matter of fact, where you are is important to where you're going. And being able to believe God where you are is where the power lies. Because everybody can believe him when they see it. Everybody can believe it when they get there. But who will believe because God said, who will believe because yeah. God promised? Yeah. Who will believe yeah. because he's a man that he cannot lie? He's not even the son of man that he has to repent. But whatever he says has got to come to pass. God has spoken over our lives. And whatever God has promised you, it's not just for you, but it's for your seed forever. For your seed forever. I believe, God, that your seed will be blessed because you press your way to church. Your seed will be blessed because you pay your tithes. You give your offer. I don't care where they are or what they doing, what club they in, whose house they at. I don't care. From right where they are, God is going to deliver. God is going to heal. God is going to bless. So, Father, we thank you today. Yes. Thank yes. you for this word. Yes. Thank you for reminding us. Yes. That we don't have to be on the mountain for you to bless us. Yes. We can be down in the valley. Yes. And you can bless us right where we are. Yes. That from as far as we can see. Yes. You have promised that you would give it to us. God help us to operate in faith this year. To walk by faith and not by sight. To walk believing you and not believing the circumstance. But standing on your word, because what you promised has got to come to pass. We thank you 
for these your people and we pray that you would bless them in a special way every household that is represented this morning we pray that you will go into that house and cause peace and love and restoration to abide we pray God that you would supply every need according to your riches and glory even in this church bless it in the name of Jesus that it would continue to be a beacon of light in this world God we thank you and we honor you even in advance for what you're getting ready to do thank you because you're going to do something we've never seen before you're going to put us in places we've never been before you're going to put stuff in our lives we've never had before hallelujah and so we thank you now in Jesus name somebody open up your mouth and give God praise like you know I said give him praise like you believe I said give him praise like you believe come on praise him praise him praise him somebody open up your mouth and lift his name up you can get it right from here you can get it We just had a God moment. We had a God moment. If you only understand how much this church needed that word. <laughs> if you only understood how much that how much as a church we needed that word. I was talking to the leaders this morning. If you only understand, don't walk out of here not taking to heart that word you know the truth is never in my entire life have I ever given away the first Sunday but I had to pay attention to God never 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 32 years never never but I heard God says do it and God aligned it when everybody said it was impossible, I said, God said, just go, just go. Right after church, go, 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 go. God said, go, go. Leave. I got in my car and I just went. You don't, if you only understood how much we needed that word. If you only, if you only understand. So thank you, Elder. If I was in upstairs by myself, I'd be crying boohoo right now. I want to I, I I look like a man right now. <laughs> Let's just take a moment to pray. Father, we thank you. But obedience leads to deliverance. And now we can get it right from here. But when we lift up our eyes, we can turn to the north, the south, the east, and the west. And we don't have to fight with our neighbor for what you have for us because what you have for us is for us and you've already declared it it's for us and now all the resources of this church are met in full the resources of every individual under the sound of her voice is filled whatever the need is filled we give you praise now restore her Spirit of the living God, fall afresh upon her. Spirit of the living God, restore her. Let it be declared that this will be her year of breakthrough like never before. Take her to heights that she can walk the valleys without being afraid. Touch her son and her children. Touch her parents. We bless them. And we say thank you. Yes, yes, yes. As we give you all the praise. Yes. The honor. Yes. And the glory. Glory. 
We don't know if you walk in here not knowing the Lord Jesus Christ. But if you didn't walk in here today and you don't know him, this, this word, you can get it from here, is a perfect word for you to put your life in the hands of Jesus. This, this is right here. This right here is a word. A word. It's, it's not a one Sunday word. This is a lifetime word. A lifetime word. You ought to go back on face on YouTube and get this word after we put it up and look at it and listening to it ten times. You ought to get this word. Have your children listen to this word. Have your family listen to this word. If you don't know the Lord Jesus Christ, we want to invite you to have a relationship with him. Not a relationship with religion, not a relationship with the church, but a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. If that's you, we just want to pray for you. He'll do the rest. We just got to pray for you. He'll do the rest. We just got to pray for you. He'll do the rest. If that's you, would you come? Would you come? Would you come that we may pray for you? If you don't have a church home, we still want to pray for you, but we believe in putting God first in our relationship with him. As we transition now into the part of our communion, we pray. Heavenly Father, that you will cleanse us. But we, your children, would not partake of your table unworthily. Let not sickness affect us. And whatever sins your people have committed, after listening to this word, forgive us. Cleanse us that whoever drinks and whoever eats may do so worthily. Sanctify this table sanctify our hearts and our minds let sickness stay away but sanctify that we may do so not because we're hungry as Paul says but we come to do so that we may have fellowship one with another in remembrance of you so we come asking for mercy and your grace Jesus' name. Amen. 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 At this time, as we go into our communion.